Hey guys, Syl here. I'm starting uh, in psychiatry as a junior doctor in about a month and a half. So I want to do some videos around mental health. Uh, these, this first mini series will be on depression and different aspects of depression. I thought I'd start with the symptoms and hopefully help differentiate it from feeling depressed versus actually having you know, a disorder of uh, depressive illness. Depressive illnesses, especially major depressive disorder is a global issue. It um, is one of the leading causes of disability worldwide and I can guarantee you 100% that it will either directly or indirectly affect your life. So it's a good idea to try and get a good understanding about it early. Uh, so that's what this video and this mini series is all about. So there are many different types of depressive illnesses. We know already about major depressive disorders, but there's also persistent dysthymic disorder, seasonal affective disorder, cyclothymic disorder, disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, bit of a mouthful, and premenstrual dysphoric disorder, and others. So there are many different types of depressive disorders, uh, and they range in severity and duration and uh, onset, but uh, really it's important to understand the different ones because they respond differently to different therapies. But in terms of major depressive disorders, I'm gonna go through the kind of criteria that the Diagnostics and Statistical Manual um, version five, which is kind of like the psychiatric Bible that you use to diagnose conditions. Um, what that stipulates are the uh, requirements symptomatically to be diagnosed with major, major depressive disorder. So guys, I don't have a lived experience with depression. I can't really tell you what it's like at a personal or experiential level, but um, this is more from a clinical viewpoint and how uh, different symptoms are used to diagnose it. So let's get started. So there are nine key symptoms that are discussed or at least listed out in the DSM-5. Um, and of these nine, there are two core symptoms. Essentially, the criteria is you need to have five of these nine symptoms, one of which is one of the two core symptoms for two weeks. Okay, so for over a two week period, you need to have at least five of these symptoms and one of those symptoms has to be one of the two core symptoms. The two core symptoms are persistent low mood and anhedonia. And anhedonia is this loss of interest, this loss of emotion, this loss of reactivity. Okay, it's this blunted kind of um, emotional state, which is a-emotional, it's unemotional, it's just devoid of emotion. Anhedonia and dysphoria are the first two on the nine. The other ones are change of body weight, insomnia or hypersomnia, so sleeping too little or sleeping too much. Now with insomnia and depression, it's the most common form is uh, early morning wakening. So they can actually fall asleep fine, but then they usually wake up 2 a.m., 3 a.m. and they just can't get back to sleep. Psychomotor agitation or slowing is a really uh, important symptom as well. And that's one that's usually quite, uh, it's more commonly seen as an, by an observer. So that highlights the importance of getting a collateral history or maybe you'll observe it yourself from the end of the bed or um, in the kind of psychiatric interview. The next symptom is fatigue. Uh, and that's pretty obvious. If you're not sleeping well, you'll probably feel quite fatigued. Uh, even if they're sleeping a lot though, they'll get a sense of fatigue. They might get a sense of uh, deep guilt. Sometimes it's even delusional. And if it's uh, really quite delusional levels of guilt, you're concerned about a subtype of depression where it's depression with uh, psychotic features. Uh, but sometimes it's hard to know whether the guilt is delusional or just from the depression. You might see that they have poor concentration. They're not following um, the question. They can't even watch TV shows anymore. Something like that uh, is another symptom. So poor concentration. And finally, most importantly, um, this absorption and uh, constant thoughts around suicidality and death. Now, those are the different symptoms um, one can experience in a uh, major depressive disorder, but it's really important that as with all kind of psychiatric diagnoses, uh, these symptoms are having a functional impact on the person's life. And that's a little bit vague as to what defines a functional impact, but usually it's a change from the baseline. Two other important points to make is that these symptoms are not a consequence of organic illness. Now, when we use the term organic illness in this context, obviously all mental health is a consequence of brain biology and the environment, so it's technically organic, but what we mean or what psychiatrists mean when they use the term organic is that it's not from another biological process of another organ. So so for example, hypothyroidism uh, that's mimicking as a depression. And the final uh, important point to make about these symptoms is that there has never historically been a manic episode because with mania, with bipolar conditions, um, the majority of the illness is actually uh, a depressed state with you know, only occasional um, manic episodes. Uh, so 
you have to be really clear in your you have to be a really good interviewer and, and remember to ask and rule out the um you know a history of manic episodes and that they're not anyway we're not going to talk about bipolar in this video uh but just be aware that that's an important criteria now all those symptoms can be a bit tricky to remember so there are some good mnemonics um one that's pretty common is sig e caps Problem with this one is that it doesn't really um, list them out in terms of core and non-core things, but you can just remember the two core ones, which is anhedonia and low mood. And then um, if there's four of these other important symptoms, then um, that's basically a diagnosis. So let's uh, write out SIGI caps and you can see. So we've talked about some of these already. So S in SIG, let me just write it out, SIG E caps. I know it doesn't really make much sense, but um, it's pretty memorable and you can just remember cigarette caps or something like that. Anyway, um, S is sleep and that can be hyper or hypo, or it's hypersomnia or insomnia. I is interest, interest. Um, and that's basically just low interest. G is guilt and that's usually um, very high. E is energy. And that relates to um, fatigue. C is concentration. Oops. Concentration. A is appetite. That can either be low or high, actually, because you can put a lot of weight on with depression. P is psychomotor agitation or slowing, so I can go up or down. And then finally, S is suicidal ideation. These are not all the symptoms that occur in a major depressive episode. And in fact, there are a set of symptoms called the somatic symptoms that are pretty important to know because it can help you sub classify uh, the major depressive episode into a uh, major depressive episode with or without somatic features. Um, the major depressive episode with somatic features is essentially what we used to call melancholia and that responds usually really well to an SSRI plus uh, psychotherapy and the other biopsychosocial stuff that you should do. So the somatic symptoms, somatic, um, this is the anhedonia. There's also the um, early morning uh, awakening, EMW, which kind of relates to sleep. There's the um, appetite change, so loss of appetite, and the psychomotor um, slowing or agitation. Also, there is a loss of libido that's included in the somatic symptoms. So these are the somatic um, symptoms and uh, they help you subclassify uh, depression, uh, major depressive disorder and therefore uh, you can tailor treatments appropriately. Now I'm going to give you guys one more really important point, actually two more, but before I do I just want to let you guys know that if you are enjoying this content please consider subscribing to the channel or hitting the like on the video, that's the best way you could support this video. Okay, now the final thing I wanted to say is although these are the symptoms of a depressive disorder, a lot of depression is undiagnosed in the community and can be uh, misdiagnosed as something else. So whenever you see a patient that is for example diagnosed with insomnia or an elderly person who's been diagnosed with cognitive decline, um, make sure Sure you ask questions around depression because that's uh, a common presentation of someone who you know it's not really cognitive just decline or it's not really true insomnia it's actually just depression masking as those conditions and they've been misdiagnosed and no one's actually f fully worked them up yet in their life uh, so you could have a massive impact and even as a student like if you're just a medical student or something like me uh, you can have a pretty positive impact if you catch out an incorrect diagnosis okay so that's it for this first video please remember this is not medical advice it's just for educational uh, purposes if anything in this video made you feel upset, uh, please consider talking to your GP about different uh, resources out there or if it's an emergency, you can call Lifeline. Um, but other than that, that's it for the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.